said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus said unto her, Thou brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection of the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though we were dead, and yet shall he live. And whatsoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Believest thou this? I will make the darkness fly before the Lord God, we truly just want to say thank you. Thank you for allowing us to be here, one with each other, God, to be in your presence, Lord Jesus. Because you said where the twos and threes are gathered, you will be in the midst, Lord. So we are believing, Holy Spirit, that you are in the midst of us right now. We are believing, God, that you are even turning around things right now, that you are moving on your spirit and by your power and by your might, God, Lord, mighty God. We give your name glory and we give your name praise because you are worthy of it and all, oh God. We come here to lift you up. We come here to magnify your name. We come here to give you glory and to give you praise, God. Because, God, you have died on the cross for us, mighty God. You even said it here to Martha that you are the resurrection, that you are the light, oh God. So we know, God, that even if we are in a dead situation, that you can bring it back to life. We know, God, that even if we feel like we are dead, once we believe in you, Jesus, you will bring us back to life. We don't have to worry about our situations. We don't have to worry about our cares. Oh, God, once we lay it down at your feet, Jesus, you will bring us back to life, God. So, God, we are asking that as we are stepping through these doors, that we will leave all our problems, that we will leave all of our situations at your feet, mighty God, that we will leave it, oh, God, even here at the altar, for this is the sanctuary of praise, that we will not let our situations make us sit down on our praise, oh, God, but that we will continue to worship you in spirit and in truth, oh, God, that as we go forward to do Finding those notes, gotta find it. She changes to I shall not be moved. That's what she just said.
You could go flush your eye up. Just go flush the water. Our motto is we walk in the spirit so that we will not get those chopsticks over. Get rid of them good. For we walk by faith and not by Got mad sticks. Every minute somebody gives you sticks, you still got chopped jerks. My bad, yeah. We would like to welcome all those online streaming for the first time. We would like to welcome all in house visitors, first time visitors, second time visitors, and third time visitors. We would like you to come to the different piano as we destroy the devil. Yeah, this is house. The kingdom of God. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We come to destroy the works of the enemy in the name of the Lord because Jesus said he did it. We come to destroy the works of the devil. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Put those hands together for Jesus one more time. Come on, keep those hands going. So our first lady of Mount Olive, we thank God. We thank God. Praise God for all of our ministers. Keep those hands going for them. To our missionaries, praise the name of Jesus. Praise God and our evangelists. Come on, come on, keep those hands. To all of our deacons in the house of God. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Jesus. Thank God for our men and for our women, our boys and our girls. Hallelujah. Our musicians live in the house of God, our singers. House of Jesus, our every technician, every usher. In the name of the Lord, praise God, hallelujah. Amen, visitors and those who are accustomed coming to those, amen, who are even absent in the house of God, in the house of God today, amen. We bless you in no other name but our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, amen, who have died on the cross of Calvary. They buried his body. Amen. But he rose again three days later. Amen. He ascended up to heaven and he promised that he's coming back again. That's the one I give glory and praise and worship to. The King of kings and the Lord of At lords. Last heaven. Thank you, Jesus. Praise Four. God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Four, one. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. We had a wonderful time last night. Amen. May you some tea? fatigue and so on. Amen. Yo, out of learned, every morning they have me. I had to say like an hour this still morning. still got to find a time to give God glory and praise. Bad. Sacrifice a they little work, bit for him you too hard, and then go man. and get your rest. Didn't Jesus asked the question, can't you just stay with me just for another hour? <laughs> Hallelujah. Yo, ain't nobody want to sing this morning. Even as we get to a certain time. In age, we gotta be even quiet me. in all areas that we work in. But amen. They'd rather come to kill me. You see how they do that? It's not fair because he's worthy. To be free. One glory, one two, one out. Glory, glory, glory. <laughs> amen, amen. Before I move on he to the next anyway, can we have those that are in the back section or on this side just come and make the, the sanctuary even to a degree? I feel like I'm leaning to the right. Amen. Praise God. If we could come on over this side. Come, come on. Deacon, deacon should be in the front. Nevertheless, in the name of Jesus, come on, men. Come on, ladies. Come on over to this side. Closer to this side. In the name of the Lord. Praise God. Amen. Come on up a little bit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's not a discussion to be had. Amen. Just come on up. In the name of Jesus. We thank God. We thank God. Come on. Put those hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hey, this looks good now. 
in the name of the Lord. Praise God, praise God. Yo, I didn't touch Amen. a key, we have I didn't touch a keyboard today. at all yesterday. That was wonderful. Yes, special in, indeed. Amen. I was saying the same thing. He got to sing and all that. I believe that we're still no, I said it this morning that we're still in the atmosphere of remembering what hard. the Lord has done too hard for us either. on the cross of Did a little sound. How many of us believe that? Hallelujah. We still Yo, gotta what talk was wrong about with his, um, even his though it's not Christmas. We still gotta talk about his Bro, he life. Had like a... Amen. We still gotta talk about My his man. death, even Let though me tell you, Easter or I resurrection. I told him he was going straight after praise and worship. I told so him they forward. do that. Amen. So you we would think he would have everything already prepared and loaded, right? From the dead. Nah. Amen. My man had to because that's called his hard drive. the gospel of Jesus and Christ. Hard drive unlocked, and according to the apostle Paul, he says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel then load the stems, because it's the power of God And then when he finally did all salvation. that, the Peter froze. So how many of us are ready to still talk about Jesus? Still talk about what he has done for us. Why he loaded the stems? Song says, when I think of the goodness of Jesus. Yes, not. And all he has done for me. My soul cry out, hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. Uh, praise God, praise God. Amen. But we're going to pray the strength. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> we, we had, we had uh, a couple of the ministers to give some exhortations regarding some of the um, happenings uh, of the time when Jesus from the um, guarding all the way to uh, uh, to he rose from the dead. Amen. Or even when he died on the cross. Amen. But we're going to pray their strength. They have uh, we pray the strength of um, Minister Savage. He's unable to make it. Amen. We pray the strength of our, uh, uh, our Reverend Bess. Amen. He's unable to make it. But tell somebody we are here. Amen. And we're still here to lift up Jesus. Praise God. So we're grateful. Amen. For our brother Daniel who will be able to st stand in the gap. And hallelujah. I believe there's a word in him. In the name of Jesus. Keep your seat there. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Come on. Put your hands together for him. According to scriptures, it says not to lay your hands yeah, on it, anyone is else. Is it suddenly. my box connected Amen. to the, um, so the jump careful. pad, right? Amen. So I was standing the gap yes. for the other one in the name of Jesus. Someone pray my strength. Praise God. Praise God. As I said, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Amen. I had two hours or two and a half hours of sleep yesterday, so the night before, and then I, Amen, came to the house of God and Amen, did some work out here in Brooklyn and Queens and came back. Amen. And tried to sleep, but, you know, someone kept knocking at my door every minute. But that's all right. I got to take care of the sheep. Hallelujah. Amen. Had a wonderful time in this inspiration. Amen. Overslept this morning, but amen. But the Lord still gave me strength. Praise God. And I believe God. Amen. That his blood will never lose his power. Praise God. I remember First Lady, as I begin with the first message, amen, that it was a couple of weeks ago when you were sick, the kids were sick, and I know I had to speak, so I still pushed and pressed because I was still not feeling 100%. But when I got up here, I felt so much better, and, and I was able to speak out of my heart, amen, and I spoke according to the word of the Lord. What the Lord had given unto me, I gave unto you. Praise this is God. And then when everyone Tropical. else was left, have left. Tropical South. We had some of the youth and young people, because we stay here now another hour or two after service. Amen. You know, they, well, we got no home to go to, so we, we just stay here in the house of God. Amen. And while I was here, all of a sudden, all my feelings came again. I ran to the bathroom so quickly, and everything that was in me came right out of my mouth. Amen. They were like, you okay? <laughs> I'm like, I'll be all right. I'm, I'm all right. Amen. I'm so glad that while I was here in the house of God, amen, the Lord brought me enough power and an anointing and healing that I'm able to give what I have to the people of God. Hallelujah. Amen. So I'm here to tell you I won't let sleep keep me back here right now. I'm going to give you the word of the Lord and then pass out later. <laughs> in the name of Jesus, praise God. And then our brother Daniel will come Amen. And he'll be the rapper-upper in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
We're still with that theme talking about what occurred while Jesus was on the cross. Praise God. And we will continue that even a little bit next week. In the name of Jesus, I'll tell you, amen, why, of the reasons and so forth. But, amen, we still believe that the word of God still has power. Power to save, power to deliver, power to set free. So we believe there, Lord. We thank you again for the word that will be spoken. Even Yo, here today wrong with his tracks too. You are he our everything. You are all in all, and most of all, you it was are more the Christ, like the Son kind of, of the Living like he God. Just flipped, oh, and there's the life script, oh, he in you. It. So bless us and guide us and keep us as we press towards the mark. As we hear your it word, was, it was working. That we will like strengthen. We will understand. Kind of it's not that. I, but Christ who lives inside of us. So in Jesus' name, we say Amen. Hallelujah. Praise I God. I want you to be like we be you jacking know, them up. Breath together. So according to the book like, of John chapter loud. 19. Like what? Praise the name of Jesus. Yeah, now it was. Amen. I see every fingerprint possible on this. John chapter 19, verse 23 uh, and 24. John the 19th chapter. Scriptures. Do we have it on the screen? If we can. The print is a little small. Amen. Do we see it? Do we have it? Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. This looks better. Also use up here. Amen. And those two scriptures or verses simply says, "Then the soldiers." When, the, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts to every soldier a part. And also his coat. Now the coat was without seam, woven from the top throughout. They said, therefore, among themselves, let us not rend it or rip it, but cast lots for it, whose it shall be that the scriptures might be fulfilled, which said they parted my raiment among them, and for my vesture they did cast lots. These things, therefore, the soldiers did. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So we thank God for the word of the Lord, and the word of the Lord is blessed. Amen. I want to use as a theme today the Lord gave me his robe hallelujah the Lord gave me his robe praise God how much time I got brother Daniel again amen I got amen just a few minutes amen within 10 to 15 minutes or so if that much amen you may be seated in the presence of the Lord praise God I have learned over the years that you don't have to be long to be strong Amen. But you still got to speak it in season and out of season. And you got to do it as often as possible so you don't have to exhaust yourself. Amen. And if you don't get opportunity in the house of God, amen, there's a hard, there's a big platform that the government made for us. Amen. And it would never, you know, it's called concrete that you can stand on. And it's raised above the street level that the Lord wants us to preach on. So the book of John here, as we have read, uh, gives its purpose in the first 18 verses of the book of John. It's called the prologue. Uh, and then it also states its purpose in John chapter 20 and verse 31. Uh, and in the, in the first verse, it says that he is called the word. Amen. The very thought of God. Amen. Someone shout the word. Amen. And then it comes a little bit later that it tells us he came to prove whom Jesus is. Amen. That he is the Christ, the promised Messiah to the Jews and the son of God to the Gentiles. Amen. And then the book of John then teaches us that it comes with a specific word which describes the book or the key word of the book of John is believe. 
And you will see that word in the main scripture or the golden text of the Bible, John 3 and 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whomsoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. You're here with me. Thank God. So every book that we know from Genesis all the way to Revelation has its purpose and it has a meaning. So John portrays Jesus as the son of God. Uh, in every chapter, we see his deity. And deity means authority. It means supremeness. Uh, and of course, uh, he is called many things, but he is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Yeah, so he's the capital K in kings. And he's the capital L in lord. Because kings and kingdoms uh, uh, will come, but they will have to pass away. But uh, the Lord and his word shall abide forever. So we have found that even though he has his deity, he has his supremeness, he is the Messiah, he is called the Christ, the job of the devil is to remove the deity of Christ, is to remove who he is, and try to make him sin, try to make, him, uh, to make us feel that he does not have any power. So when we know that he has power and we know that he loves us because when we cry, he hears us. Oh, and that's the job of a king. That's the job of one who has full authority in his hands. Oh, this is the confidence that we have in the Lord that while we are yet praying, he hears us. And not only does he hear, tell somebody he answers. Uh, when the storms come and you read in the book of John and the many other chapters or the book and the other books uh, that he has authority over the winds and the waves. Uh, in other books, he has authority even over animals. He has authority even over the trees. He has authority over the sky. Yeah. Tell somebody he has full authority uh, because he's the king of kings. And he is the Lord of Lords. Uh, so even when the, when the disciples try to cross to the other side, he comes, he, he comes and he has to calm the sea for them. He had to rescue them. He didn't tell them, let them drown. He didn't come and say, oh, you're not going to make it out of this one. But he told them, let's cross over to the other side. And when the Lord tells you, We're, we are going over, amen, we are going over. Amen. No matter what storms come our way, no matter how much hardship we got to go through, what that old song says, the harder the battle, the sweeter the victory. I've got to make this journey somehow. Oh, so it teaches us that he allows them to cross over. We are allowed to get to places that we can't get through on our no own because he has authority. He has supremeness. He is, we we got to be then strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Oh, so Christ, through the book of John, it proves the fact there is no problem that he cannot solve. That's why we got to take our burdens to the Lord and leave them there. Hallelujah. I believe God that he is still a healer. I still believe that he is a deliverer. I still believe that he's a way maker. I still believe that he, no matter what comes our way, God can do it. Is there anything too hard for our Lord? Tell somebody there's nothing too hard because I got Christ's robe on me. I'm clothed in righteousness. I'm not my filthy rags. I gave him my old tartar garment. He gave me a robe of pure white. So now we find that Jesus clothes us because we love him. He clothes us because he loves us. Uh, and I here to tell you, no matter what Louis Vuitton may have, uh, and Sean John, amen, and many other of the clothing, uh, understanding uh, of clothing, uh, Jesus still has the best clothing. 
that when we walk out in public, people will see the righteousness of God all over us. They will see that we are born again. We are made fresh. We're made back brand new. You may wear some of the old clothes, but no matter what, when people see you and your clothes in the Lord, they will say, you look different. Oh, you look fresh. You look cleaned up. And let them know that I've got on Christ. I've got on this new wear. Amen. Not made by man's hand, but made out of the heavens. So we have the best clothing, which, and Jesus has it, and it's called his kingly robe. So when he was here on earth, he walked around with regular garments, but it was still special because it was on Jesus. How do we know it was special? Because the woman with the issue of blood, she pressed through the crowd, she pushed her way, and the Bible says that she touched the hem of his garment. And because she touched his hem, ah, she was made whole. Ah, guess what? He still got a garment on. And all we got to do is reach out and grab it. Is there anybody here that just want to reach out and just touch? And Jesus is all that matters. And we will never, ever be the same. Oh, thank you, Lord. So when they took him to the cross, the Bible tells us they stripped him of his robe. They stripped him of his garment. They stripped him of what he had on. Oh, because the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, it was gruesome. They nailed him to the cross. It was much blood. They stretched him high, put him high and stretched him wide. But it was for me he died. Oh, he was nailed on the cross for me. Oh, so they put him on the cross and it says they took his garment and they tried to separate it into pieces to give to every soldier. Instead of separating then the robe that he had on, uh, the garment he had that didn't have any seams. It means that it was one full garment. Uh, they said, we will cast lots for it. We will gamble for it. We see who will win, win the piece of clothing. Uh, but however, that's why when the Lord gives us our new garment, it don't have any seams. Amen. It cannot be separated. That's why we are separated from the world and we are one with Christ. Because if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away and behold, all things become new. So now they said that therefore uh, among themselves, uh, let's cast lots for it. Uh, that, that John, uh, he knew and he heard with his own eyes and his ears uh, that, that he was the only disciple that was there. He knew what they were doing at the bottom of the cross. They knew what he was acting, how they were acting at the bottom of the cross. And it's the same way when we don't know Christ, we're at the bottom of the cross. And we're not understanding what he wears. It's going to come on us. That the blood will wrap down right on us. Because we're there at the bottom of the cross. But eventually what's on top got to come down. What's on Jesus got to come to us. So now the devil tried to strip, so to strip him of his clothing. Get rid of his clothing. Oh, so that, but the scriptures had to be fulfilled um, but nevertheless can I just remind you now uh, that no matter how bad it seems uh, they can't strip Christ uh, of what he has uh, he came from heaven above uh, so that we can have life uh, and have it more abundantly uh, he came so that we can live uh, and the Bible teaches us that he will give us a robe of pure white uh, because he is, he is a reign in white uh, he's a reign in blessing that's why he gives us the beatitude. He calls us blessed because he gives us a new piece of garment. In the book of Revelation, he calls us blessed. And those that are caught up into heaven, he gives them a robe of white. Ask somebody, what robe do you got on? I've got on the robe of Jesus. He handed me a new robe. Can I say that song again? He gave me, I gave him my old Tata garment. 
garment. He gave us a robe of pure white. Now we are feasting from manna from heaven, and that's why we are happy right now. I've got my war clothes on now. It's filled with blood. It's, it may be worn and messed up, but I'm here to tell you I'm going to change it after a while. When I get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing it shall be. When I see Jesus, we will sing, we will shout the victory. How many of us are ready for this wedding? How many of us are ready to go and celebrate with Jesus? I'm a feast with Jesus. I've got my war clothes on now, but I've got a new set of garment waiting for me in the name of the Lord. So rejoice in the Lord. Tell somebody and give them high five and tell them, I've got the robe of Jesus on me. Me. In Jesus' name, may God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. May he give you peace. I've got a new robe. I've got a new piece of garment. I've got it on. I've, I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. And no one can take it away from me. No one can strip it away. No one can take it off. Jesus gave it to me. The king. on and we come to give God glory honor what and praise amen 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 can we put our hands together for our bishop amen amen I truly feel encouraged today amen and we gonna, as we also talk about the crucifixion of what Jesus done on the cross I admire what he has done because he did it why for me amen and he didn't just do it for me he did it for all of us amen amen maybe we all stand to our feet as we um, do the reading of his word. Amen. My text will be taken from John chapter 19 and verse 34. Giving honor to God who is the head of my life. And also to our bishop, our bishop Gabriel Austin. And to first lady Catherine Austin. And to everybody here, the wonderful ministers, musicians, worship leaders. My mom, Minister Anoint Austin. And Minister Dwayne Austin. To my wonderful family, I greet you in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. So my text will be taken from John chapter 19 and verse 33, and it reads, But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and forthwith came out the blood and water. Amen. My topic today will be painful process. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, there's a painful process. Amen. You may have your seats. But, the so, but one of the soldiers, oh, there are four books in the New Testament known as the Gospels. Yes. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That's right. There are three which is known as the Synoptic Gospel. Yes. Matthew, Mark, and Luke, which, is a, which includes the similar stories with the similar sequence and the similar context. Right. On the contrast... The book of John differs because it covers the different time span of Jesus' life and his ministry. John gives us scenes of this spiritual reality. They are profound. John uses pictures, signs throughout his gospel to help us grasp his reality. For instance, in John chapter 21 and verse 29, John the Baptist says, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. We know that Jesus isn't literally the lamb with four legs and a fluffy coat. But the picture of Jesus or the lamb, the picture of Jesus as the lamb shows us something beyond words can tell us. Without explanation, the picture shows us with meekness, gentleness, sinlessness of the Lord who gave himself for us. The word of God reminds us that no one didn't take his life, but he laid it down just for us. Amen? John uses the other pictures through his account, such as the heavenly ladder, the brazen serpent, the vine and the branches. These signs help us connect 
deep spiritual context for us. Nonetheless, all four Gospels has an account of the crucifixion of Jesus. But John chapter 19 and 34 tells us is recorded that it doesn't appear. John's details recorded doesn't appear in the other three accounts. John chapter 19 and verse 31 and 33 reads, Now it was the day of preparation. The next day was the special Sabbath because the Jewish leaders did not want the bodies to be left on the cross during the Sabbath. But Pilate, but they asked Pilate to have his legs broken and his bodies taken down. The soldiers therefore came to break the legs of the man, the first man who had been crucified, and the others. But they came to find, they came to Jesus and found him dead already, and they did not break his legs. In, the, in this text, John shows the significance of the pain in the process, which is also the blood and the water. First, it shows the redemptive plan of Jesus and how it deals with our sins. John chapter 1 and 29, it reminds us, then the next day, Jesus coming unto him said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh the sins of the world. Hebrews chapter 9 and 24 reminds us, Christ is not entered into the holy place made by hands, but which are figures that are true, but in heaven itself now appear the presence of God for us. The Lord being put to death did not bring sorrow, but it gave us a spring forth in life. Amen. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 13 and 14, it says, Brothers and sisters, do not want, we do not want you to be uninformed about who sleeps in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind, who, who, who has no hope. For who believe in Jesus died and rose again, and will believe that God will bring Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. Amen. The angel in Revelations chapter 9, it reminds us, the angel said, For this, blessed are those who are invited in the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, there are the true words of God. So I want to let you know that death, you are wasting your time. Amen. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, death, you are wasting your time. In Luke chapter 7 and 11, it reminds us the first person Jesus raised from the dead as he approached the town of Nain. He met at the funeral procession leaving the city, and the coffin was a young man and the only son of the widow. And when Jesus saw this procession, his heart went out to the women and said, Do not cry. Jesus came close and touched the coffin of the dead man. Young man, I say, get up obeying the divine order of God. The dead man sat and began to talk. And in the morning, they all gave God praise because God came to help his people one more time. Can I give you another instance where God specialized in the resurrection? In Luke chapter 8, it says, Jesus showed his power over death, raising the young daughter of Jairus and the, the synagogue leader. The Lord was surrounded by the crowds when Jairus came to him, begging him to visit his house and healing his dying 12-year-old. Jesus began to follow Jairus home, and, but, but on the way, a member of Jairus' household approached them, and they sat with the sad news that Jairus, your daughter, died. Jesus turned, Jesus turned to Jairus, with words of hope, do not be afraid. Believe and be healed, and she will be healed. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, believe. Upon the arrival of Jairus' house, Jesus took the girl's parents, Peter, James, and John, and entered where the body lay. There he took her, <coughs> there he took her up by the hand and said, child, get up. The spirit returned and once, at once, and she stood up. Jesus and his disciples left the girl alive and well and astonished by his parents. Amen. Somebody look at your name. And you, it might look dead, but tell it, get up. One more instance where Jesus specialized in the resurrection. Lazarus of, ja of Bethany. John chapter 11, the third person Jesus raised from the dead. It was his friend Lazarus. 
the word came to Jesus that Lazarus was ill, and Jesus did not go to Be and Jesus did not go to Bethany to heal him. Instead, he told his disciples, "This sickness will not end up in death." Amen. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, "Your story will not end up in death. It's only an introduction." Amen. So now Jesus, now God's glory. So for God's glory, so it, it is for God's glory so that God's son may be glorified through it. A couple of days later, Jesus said to his, a, a couple of days later, Jesus told his disciples that Lazarus died, but he promised a miracle. I'm going to wake him up. And when Jesus reached Bethany four days after Lazarus' death, Lazarus' grieving sisters greeted him and said, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother would have died. Jesus, speaking to Martha, promised a rise to rise Lazarus from the dead and proclaim him to be the resurrection and the life. Jesus asked, Jesus asked to see the grave, and when he got to the place, he commanded the stone to roll away from the tomb. Jesus prayed and called with a loud voice, Lazarus, get up, and he promised the dead man came out, and as a result of the miracle, God glorified, and the many of the Jews had to come visit Mary and see that Jesus did, and they believe him. Again, I'm here to remind you, death, you are wasting your time. The blood of Christ did not offer forgiveness of sin, but it also sanctification. Hebrews chapter 13 and 12 tells us, Jesus also suffered in order to sanctify the people of his own blood. It makes sense that God wants us to be in a new relationship with him without sin that previously commanded us. The word of God reminds us that while we were yet sinners, Christ still died for us. The blood is God's sign of bearing special significance. The blood is signified a life has been given through sacrifice. Leviticus chapter 19, 17, and 11, it reads, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it upon you, the altar make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that makes atonement for your souls. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, It's a painful process, but Jesus had to go through it. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. Amen? Jesus Christ being the seed what was put in the ground and gave us life and more abundantly. Gave us life and more abundantly. Jesus shows the importance of the water. Wherever there is water, there is life. Genesis chapter 1 and 2 reminds us, now the earth was formless and empty, darkness over the surface of the deep. But the spirit of the Lord was hovering over the water. And somebody look at you there, but there is life. There is life. Isaiah chapter 44 and 3 reminds us, For I will pour my water upon that that is thirsty, and the flood upon the dry ground. And I will pour my spirit on thy seed, and my blessing upon thy offspring. When Jesus is pure, Jesus is the pure for our water, and Jesus, he gives life. Amen? And John chapter 4 and 14 it reminds us, But whoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water I shall give him shall be in the well springing up everlasting life. Somebody look at your neighbor, there's everlasting life in the water, amen? Living water can be understood in various ways. The cleanest way, the clearest way we can understand the living water symbol is salvation. A true knowledge of God. Jesus, the Holy Spirit, Jesus is the Holy Spirit. God provides us with everything we need and the living water. And he continued to give us water. Amen? So he's not just the water, but he is divine life. He has divine assignment, and he continues to fulfill his promise, his purpose, and his plan. Somebody say, his divine assignment. And it's only through the pain and the process. But the flowing of the water and the unbreaking bone mentioned in John... It is signs to relate the imparting aspect of Jesus' death. The death of Jesus imparts life release. The, the, 
The death that imparts life released the Lord's divine life from within him for producing the church, which is composed of all his believers in him, divine and different and specially, impar- especially separated. Jesus death released the Lord Jesus the Lord's death released the Lord's divine life in him. John chapter 12 and 24. Truly truly I say unto you unless the grain of the wheat falls into the ground and dies it abides alone but if it dies it bears much fruit. Amen. Before his crucifixion Jesus likened unto himself to a grain in the wheat that will fall on the ground and die and gain the wheat and the seed. But inside the shell, there's a seed. Inside the shell of the seed, it is life and is a life element. But the seed remains whole and the life within conform is one seed. But if you fall to the ground and die, so out of the shell can be broken open. And the only way life is only way life is in the seed can be released is so that it can bear much fruit. In this in this proclamation, we see that the Lord He died so we can increase. Amen. So we can live. Amen. So in the same way, the divine Son of God became flesh and the blood named Jesus. Jesus is the divine human man. And his divine life was conformed through the shell and his humanity. Amen? But God desired that we all receive divine life. And for this to happen, a divine life in Jesus was released. And when the shell of his humanity, this happened when Jesus died on the cross. In this divine death, it was released divine life. Amen? So Jesus had to be put in the ground and then water over it so there can be divine life. Amen. So anybody can receive of this life, of this living water name, Jesus Christ. There are two lessons we can observe through this lesson. We can continue to enjoy the provisions of his blood and his life forever. The Lord pierced side is a prefigure of Adam's open side, out of which Eve pronounced in Genesis chapter 2 and 21. But the blood was typified by the blood of the Passover lamb. In Exodus 12, it reminds us, and he shall take the blood and strike it on the two posts and the upper door of the houses. In 27, it says, and they shall say, it is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover, who pass over the houses of the children of Egypt. And when he smite the Egyptians and delivered our houses, all the people bowed and worshiped. Amen. So when the blood is on the po- on the post, the Lord was going to pass over the death angel. Amen. Wherever there's Jesus, there is life. Wherever there's water, there is life. Wherever there's blood, there's sanctification and life. Amen. Revelation chapter 12 and 11, it reminds us, they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. And, the, and they loved not their lives unto death. Water typifies the flow of the smart, the smitten rock. In Exodus chapter 17, it says, Behold, I stand before thee, the open rock of Herb, and thou shalt smite the rock, and there come water out of it that the people may drink. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and 4, it says, And, it, and they all drank of the same spiritual drink, for this drink of the spiritual rock that flowed them And the rock was named Jesus Christ. Amen. So the blood was formed in a fountain that that washes away the sins. Zephaniah chapter 13 and 1, it says, In the day that he opened up the fountain in the houses of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the sin for impurity. The water can be the fountain of life. Psalms chapter 36 and 9, it tells us Jesus' death opened up two fountains to meet our needs, a fountain washing away our sins and a fountain that gives us lives. So the, so you, so for, so for you is a fountain of life and light we see his light. Amen. So to conclude, this, there's a fountain 
filled with blood, drawn from Emmanuel's veins, and the sin and plug beneath the flood to loose all the guilty stains. Loose all the guilty stains, and one more time, loose all the guilty stains. And the sinner plunged beneath the flood to lose all the guilty stains. We can continue to we can continue to come to the fountain for the cleansing and the confession of any sins. And any if any that receive more by the divine life by coming to the Lord's fountain and drink of him. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, there's process and there's pain in the process. And there's two fountains and you can receive everlasting life if you drink from this wonderful everlasting fountain, which is Christ Jesus. God bless you. Come on, put those hands together. Hallelujah. There's pain in the process. But it's going to produce something out of it. And it's all coming from the same fountain. The same fountain of Jesus. Praise God, blood and water. Hallelujah, which would bring life. Hallelujah. Just give somebody a hug and let them know there's life. Out of Jesus, there's life in the blood. There's life. You didn't hug somebody. Come on, hug someone. Don't be ashamed. Praise the Lord. There's life in Jesus. Life in the blood. Life in the water. Life and life and life. And you shall live and have life more abundantly. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you, Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. And real quick, can I see how a person with life starts to act? When we're dead in our trespasses or when we're physical, when we're dead or we're dying, we lay on that deathbed. Too wrapped up into us. Can't go nowhere. Can't do anything. Amen. But when you're healed, then you get up and you walk out the hospital. When we were dead in sin, we was here at the bottom, struggling to move and get our minds together. But Jesus liberated us with his blood. Pour the water on us. Now we're fresh. We're clean and we're growing. Can I see how somebody with life starts to act? Somebody with life. Tell the devil I got life. Let the enemy know I got life. should be sorry and you should be gloomy and you should be crying and weeping and mourning. But I'm here to I'm here to talk about death. <laughs> the death of Jesus that gave us life. And since we got life we might as well worship the one that gave us life. <laughs> Praise God. It's not a funeral. It's not a memorial. But it's a homecoming. I heard that yesterday. We're celebrating Jesus. That's why we worship and praise the name of the Lord. Put your hands together for the Lord just one more time. And I'm going to keep talking about the death of Jesus. Amen. It's foolishness to those that don't believe, that don't understand. But I 
really leave God. I believe what the Lord has done for us on the cross. Praise God, praise God. This is wonderful just coming together to talk about Jesus when we talk about the Lord. Praise God, no matter how bad your circumstances are. Amen. We have a home beyond the sky. Uh, a place that Jesus is preparing for each and every one of us. So that old Sunday school song simply says, smile a while and give your face a rest. Amen. We found and through history or not through history, through study, those that smile or laugh more. Amen. They tend to live longer. Praise God. Amen. But I didn't come up here to be comical and so on. I come to smile and enjoy the presence of the Lord. Praise God. Because there's joy in Jesus. Uh -huh. so how, many, how many of us believe there's joy when you come to the house of God with the neighbors, with your friends, and with the brethren and talk about Jesus? The joy of the Lord is our shirt. So be happy, or other words, blessed in Jesus. Hallelujah. So we come to the house of God to be blessed, to be happy. But there still, we still talk about what the Lord has done on the cross. That it even still make you cry while you're happy. Amen. It still brings tears to your eyes and you're happy at the same time. Because he didn't have to do it, but he did. He made a way. He paved the way so that we can have life. And all you have to do is believe. Oh, hallelujah. Believe in whom Jesus is. The son of the living God that sacrificed his life so that we can have life. In Jesus, But there's many and some that may not know whom Jesus is, have not surrendered, and have not given your life back to him. Amen. Or you're still on the fence. Amen. You're not hot nor cold. You're still trying to figure it out. Amen. But we're going to pray the prayer of faith. Amen. That you be strengthened at this very you really hour. Ate all those biscuits? Or even those that would give their names you and say the names aloud biscuits. of those uh, Amen. That need to know the Lord as their Savior. Your family member, someone you may know personally, someone she to shout their names out. So like, and then we yeah, also gonna pray for those. We're gonna give so I, um, prayer I gave it to Ali. That I gave it to Jason. To I gave it to the Lord as their Savior. Too. Hallelujah. We believe that the Lord is still working in this day. We still believe that the blood of Jesus still works, and we still believe My the prayer of the righteous availeth much. Praise God. So can we pray this prayer right now? Are we ready to pray this prayer of faith? Wait, I'll put you on. Amen. That many will Strawberry get biscuit to from know Popeyes. this one that has shed his blood, uh, his water for us, so that we can have life. Lord, our Heavenly Father, we thank you. Uh, shout those names out. Come on. Come on with me. In the name of the Lord, we pray a prayer of faith right now according to your name, according to your will. You said, I don't want everyone or anyone to perish, but I wish that they should have life. Hallelujah. You came to give life and have, that we may have it more abundantly. While the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But we're grateful, dear Lord, for whom you are and what you have done on the cross for us. So, dear Lord, bless us indeed. And even though sometimes we have sorrow, we may feel sorrowful in heart because of our loved ones and many others around that have not received you as their Savior. Many are dying and going to the underworld, going to hell, um, going to Sheol. But yet still, dear Lord, you desire that men would know who you are so that they too can be saved and live in heavenly places. So we come against the plans of the enemy that will bring deaf ears, oh, that people will not gravitate or move towards the word of the Lord. But Lord, we pray the prayer of faith that their spirit will be opened up. Lord, that they'll be arrested in the spirit. That, Lord, shake them loose. Shake them like a rug. Oh, they'll shake them, their Lord, like an earthquake is happening. Shake them, their Lord. They will realize that something in the heavens have occurred. And the spirit of the Lord is resting on them. Oh, that their atmosphere will be created so that they, too, can give their heart and their mind and their Lord to Jesus. Their hearts to the Lord. So, their Lord, we believe that you're still working. 
We still believe that your, that your blood still work. We believe that you're pouring out into this everlasting water that all we have to do is just take a sip. All we have to do is just drink of it. So the Lord bless us indeed. Bless us again. Guide those that smitten hearts. Those that are going through. Oh, those that even faith have decreased. Lord, that increase what occurred in their life. Lord, that they will see the blessings of the Lord that will make rich and will add no sorrow. So in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We bless your holy name. And we say, thank God for the blood. We thank you, Lord, for the pouring out of that spiritual water that we will never thirst again. So in Jesus' name, we say amen. Hallelujah. If there's anyone that needs to know who Jesus is, if there's anyone that needs to know who Jesus is, amen, we want you to just say this prayer after me, the prayer of faith, so that you too, amen, can be engrafted part of of the kingdom of the Lord. You'll be called a child of God. You'll be called a Christian according to scripture. Amen. One who believe, one who have accepted the Lord as your savior, one who believe in your heart and your mind is made up. One who believe according to the word of the Lord. So just say these words after me if you wish to be saved. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner and you are the savior. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I believe that when you was buried, you, you buried my sins with you. I believe that when you rose from the dead, you got up without our sins. And all we have to do is just believe in you. Put our total trust in you. And I believe that you have done it. And please, Lord, forgive me. Try me again. I'm sorry. I repent of my sins. And I believe that I'm forgiven. I believe I have access to the tree of life. I believe I have a home in glory. And I believe I'm saved. In the name of Jesus, put your hands together for those who have repeated those words online in the sanctuary. If you are truly saved, if you have received the Lord as your Savior, you are now saved. And no one can erase your name out of, out of the book of life. Amen. You have life in Jesus, the life giver. Hallelujah. God continue to bless you. May heaven smile upon you. And may he give you peace in the precious name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Put our hands together for the Lord one more time. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Praise God, praise God. Well, here, this is a good time to give. We want to give unto the Lord. Bless the Lord in our giving. Ties envelope to indicate to the ushers. Just raise those hands to heaven. Raise your hands in the air. And the words. Same thing. In the air. Amen. And as you as you receive those ties envelope. Amen. The Lord teaches us in scriptures. Amen. Bring all your ties and offering. Amen. What you sacrifice to give back to Him. That ten percent of your earnings. What you have received because of labor. We have read this morning. That when you work, when you labor, that's the way that you eat. Amen. And so it's the Lord that gives us strength and enough anointing and power so that we can labor in, in the name of the Lord. How many of us ever wake up and say, I don't feel like going to work today? Amen. That's many of us. Praise God. No one really, or not much of us, get up happy and say, yes, work today. No, no we don't really get that way. Amen. But the Lord, he's the one that gives us strength. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Ah, oh, he gives us that. It's the Caribbean. God is good. God is good to me. To go to work. Even if we have work online. Praise God. That's and there's some that wake up late because they don't feel like going online. In the name of the Lord. Praise God. And show up to everything late. Let me move on. In the name of Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. But we pray that the Lord will continue to give us strength. And if we show our responsibility right back to him, he will show that blessings of the Lord while we're in the land of the living, that others will see who we are in Christ. Oh, glory to God. So as we give unto him, let's be, be, be prepared to receive a bountiful blessing. There won't even, maybe not even come to you specifically, but you're laying up for your children's children. Oh, thank you, Lord. May the Lord's blessings be upon you as you make you rich. Let's stand to our feet as we bless this offering, as we bless this time of giving. You don't have to give any lines. Let the Lord speak to your heart, speak to your mind, even as we have endeavors. As I have mentioned before, praise God, the talks have resumed, even regarding getting our building or securing the building in Queens, where we're looking to purchase Amen. And we're not looking to get a loan. We're not looking to borrow any money. We're trying to just get it all on our own accord. Praise God. And can we do it? Praise God. Tell somebody it's already done. In Jesus' name. I believe God. The Lord can do exceedingly abundantly more than we can ask or think. Praise God. But we can't do it alone. We need your help. We need your assistance. Amen. And it shall be done in the name of the Lord. So just continue to give. If you can give, bless the Lord in your given seed offering no matter what so that we too, amen, can show the blessings of God in the atmosphere. So raise those offerings in the hand, that seed gift, whatever you may have. Those online, you see the different ways to give. You can give unto the Lord as well. In the name of Jesus, so Lord, our Heavenly Father, we thank you again for opportunity to give in your presence. We thank you, Lord, for strength and for anointing that we were, that we were able to labor for the last week and some for the last decade, some for the last 20, 30, 40 years, and even receiving uh, a continuous income like, you know, because of investments and things that they have put aside Oh, with wisdom and understanding of even managing their monies. So their Lord, we thank you oh, for the blessing for the hearts of these people. And what they oh, start seeing your just children who are given to back to the storehouse. So their Lord, strengthen them and continue to bless them accordingly, according to your word. So in Why Jesus' you that, name, weak? we love you Why and you we that, thank weak? you. And we all shout we, and say, Amen. And you stuff up, man. Hallelujah. Give unto the Lord in Jesus' name. The directors of the ushers.
do it. Do it. Do it. If there's somebody from the islands, they want to shout up in the ear and say, I'm from there. Uh -huh, I see you. I see you. And how many live in Brooklyn or Queens or Long Island? Brooklyn? Long Island, all of that is an island too. <laughs> I mean, live in Staten Island. <laughs> all right. So no matter what island One, two, come out. you may be from, or you live in now, or how many live on the Earth Island? Go <laughs> ahead. No way, my mom's feet that you're from God Island. is good. Is that all right? Get your tambourines. Get your washcloth. Get something in your hand, and we're gonna let the enemy know we're here to celebrate that God is good. Ready, go! God is good. God is good. God is good to me. I'm gonna let him down. Woo! I'm gonna let him down. Raise it in the air. I'm gonna let him down. Yeah, so good to me. Yes. God is good.
good. What a mighty God we serve. That angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. One more break it down. Oh, put your hands together for Jesus. Well, glory, glory, glory. Praise God, praise God. Y'all know that song? Hear my cry, O oh Lord. And I hang up to my, when my heart is over, Mel, what? Lead me to the rock. One, two, ready?
somebody. Church like it ought to be. When the saints come together, what a day of rejoicing. Well, we are wet and we are so like it ought to be. Still we are wet and we are so. Say it again. Still we are wet. Yes, sir. Those who are here for the first time, if you could come remain standing, praise God. We want to just give you a wonderful Mount Olive welcome. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Put your hands together for them. Also, we're going to pass around a mic to you and we're going to ask of you just to give your name, who invited you, and how you come to be here at Mount Olive today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise we start laying in the back. All right. God bless you. And where you're from? I'm from what? Where I'm from? Yes. What church I'm from? What country? Uh, I'm from? Anywhere, anything. <laughs> All above. I'm from Jamaica, West Indies. All right, beautiful. God bless you. Thank you for joining with us today. Praise God. Praise God. And while we're here on this side, Amen, and gentlemen. Amen. A wonderful crisp blue suit. In the name of Jesus. Give him praise. Give him praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Say, we're two and three. Get out of the house. Here, here, here he is in the midst. Hallelujah. Amen. And no one invited me. I was passing yesterday and uh, I'm from the barber. You'll okay. get my little, little lift. You're cut looking. Okay. Try to shop. So I, there was something going on here and I looked through uh, the door. Because mm -hmm. I, 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 the praise there, the song just did something for me. I just couldn't move. Uh -huh. And I ended up coming in with my, with my little grocery and putting the corner there. You know, you always... Uh -huh. You know, but God knows the heart. That's right. It's not the ultimate appearance sometimes, you know. And I'm so happy to be here, man. I'm, I'm excited. Uh. Because God is good. Hallelujah. Amen. God is so good. God is so good. Hallelujah. Holy. Holy is his name. And hallelujah. I just want to give him praise. I'm, you know, I just try to stay humble. That's the most important thing. You stay humble in whatever yeah. you do for God. And he will lift you up in the sacred times and in, 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 the, in the open times. And more so is in the, in, in the secret where nobody can see. Uh -huh. Because we can put on a show, you know. But when, when we are alone, uh, you know, he, he, he watches us and he knows our heart. That's right. So, Pastor, I love you all. 
my first time around, Justin's like, I've been here before. Just, I mean, because, you know. Yes, yes. We've seen it's you easy to identify, you, you know, when you have something in you that's, that's special, something that's different. That's right. And I'll come again because I just love the, the presence in here, man. I, Amen. I love it. And again, thanks for having me. God, God bless you all. Thank you. What's your name again? My, my name is uh, Brother Wayne. Brother Wayne Neckles. Wayne Neckles. Wayne? Wayne Neckles. I'm, I came from there as well. Grenada. Okay. Lived in New York for a, cu a couple of years. But okay. sweet Grenada. Hallelujah. From Grenada. <laughs> Give your hands together for our dear brother. God bless you, our next brother. Remy, from the Virgin Islands. Okay. What's your name again? Remy. Remy. Yeah. Amen. From the Virgin Islands. Yeah. yeah. Praise God. Bless you. You have been invited by? Uh, Shelly John. Uh, uh, amen. God bless you. She was here last week as well. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you for coming here today. You're welcome. Amen. Beautiful, beautiful. Amen. Now our sister right behind you. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Bless you. What brought me here uh -huh. is because I listened to the Spirit. Oh, wow. I got up feeling sick. I got a dislocated shoulder. My. And I called my sister in church. I said, sis, I'm going to look for a church close by. I cannot come over today. But where the presence of the Lord is, mm. there is liberty. Freedom. And that's not the, the best. Mm -hmm. I was looking for a church to come to. Wow. And this lady, I saw her, I said hi, and we started talking. She said, well, I am going to church. I said, okay, you have a partner. <laughs> so we walked and we talked as I came. When I came into the church, I said, Lord, I bless you. I enjoy this service. Amen. Okay, so who is speaking here? I hail from the island of Grenada in the West Indies. The well. land of spices and beautiful <laughs> beaches. Hello. I thank God for his covering over That's my right. life. And I'm happy to be here. It's like I, I met you all before in yes. the spirit. Thank right? you for shipping us so to say I her give name. God praise and I give him thanks. Well, she she forgot to say her name. You. Praise God. Put your hands together. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise God. Amen. We got Virgin Island. We got Grenada and Grenada. And we have from Jamaica. In the name of the Lord. What's that? Oh, yeah, her name. Okay. My name is Christine. Christine. Okay. Yes. Hey, praise God. Amen. Sister Christine. Amen. In the name, I've botched that up about 100 times before, you know, but, I, I, since, but today, Sister Christine. Amen. <laughs> May God bless you. God bless wonderful, you wonderful. Put your hands together for these wonderful visitors, first time visitors. Just give them a warm, well, my olive welcome. Just point your hands at them. Tell them, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Show them some love, touch, and agree with them. Shake their hand, whatever it is. Put them on the shoulder. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Praise God. Well, again, we're praying the strength of everyone. Praise God, even those who are absent today. Praise God. Amen. Many that was here last night. Amen. We have learned. Amen. That they, they don't know how to hang. Yeah, yeah. They, 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 they can't hang. They can't hang. Amen. Our, our deacon was here, you know. You know how to hang. Deacon, you was you know how to hang. Amen. Everybody else, they don't know how to hang. They can't, can't hang. They can't hang. No, but <laughs> we pray their strength also. Amen. We thank God for our youth, our young people. Amen. Our my brother Kira McCollum, praise God, doing such a wonderful job. Our sister Tanika Day, God, um, Martin, sorry. Amen. Praise God, doing a wonderful job with the youth and the young people. Amen. And our choir director, our master of, of music. Amen. Our minister, Duane Austin. He sang so much and so forth this morning. He lost his voice during worship. In the name of the Lord, praise God. And, and the me all waking up late, getting there late. He had to sing more. Amen. But the Lord will restore his voice. Amen. He needs some old Grenadian and Jamaican and, 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 um, and Virgin Island rub up to rub down on his chest. 
grateful for even the choir who sang yesterday and the step team who, amen, who stepped for Jesus. Praise God, praise God, and amen. Even the group that came and participated and all the visitors that came around and amen. This is what, this is what it's all about, being fellowship, having fellowship one with another in the name of Jesus. Well, we're going to continue the prayer even for those who are absent and not here and those that are sick and afflicted. Continue to remember our Elder Bowen in prayer, amen, and to, to rehab and, and so forth. And uh, remember our, amen, our brother Mark who had a uh, surgery or episode of some sort, and amen. And also remember our dear Swaby, praise God, the family, amen, with her issues, with her eyes, and so forth, and, and, and to go through. We are our brother's keeper. Am I am I right, somebody? Amen. So when we are down and we are since we are brothers and sisters in Christ, we have to now communicate one with another. Give them a call. See how they're doing. Pray their strength. Amen. On the phone. Am I right, somebody? Amen. Look at somebody. Ask them. Have you called somebody lately? Praise God. Amen. Call those that you have missed. Call those that are not here. Call those. Mind them. It don't have to be a long gossip kind of conversation. Amen. I just call to say how you doing. How, you know, bless you, bless you, let's prayer. And it don't have to be a very long prayer. Prayer to prayer, faith in Jesus' name, and get on with your day and make the next call in Jesus' name. So let's continue to have that fellowship, that brotherly love continue in the name of the Lord. Praise God. What else is there? Amen. Also pray for me. Uh, this, this week, I'll be having a procedure that will be done in the middle of the week somewhere. So there's a process you always have to go through. Amen. So, amen. Sometimes people go in for the sm smallest procedure, smallest thing, and the next thing you know, they don't even come back out. Oh, you know, you know a great musician, amen, from Hezekiah Walker Choir and um, James Paul Choir, uh, organist, went in for a small procedure never came back out. Amen. So pray my strength. Amen. Is that okay? Amen. And not only us, but uh, pray for anyone that is going through. And I remind each and every one of you, if you're going through something, you don't have to tell us what it is, specifically what you're going in for. Just say, I have something coming up this week. Can you pray for me? Because we believe in prayer. That's what the church of God does. We pray one for another. Am I right, somebody? Praise God, praise God. Well, we have more announcements. Amen. Our sister, Kimberly Isaac, she's doing a wonderful job, by the way. Awesome job. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I'm coming to you on behalf of the Women's Empowerment Ministry to remind you that we will have our monthly meeting this Saturday at 6 p.m. on Google Meet. And it will be our last meeting before we come in person to the tea party. So that will be our last meeting before we come in person. So we want to encourage you to join online as we fellowship together. And we'll be talking about the topic of sisterhood. So our topic this month is on sisterhood. So be in anticipation for this Saturday's meeting at 6 p.m. And for the tea party, which will the topic is understanding the power of women from Esther 4, verse 15 to 17. We're going to be in person where we will experience and understand what it means to have the power, the power that we have inside of us, and what God says about it. Amen. So we encourage you to put your name in RSVP today. Somebody say today. Today. If you haven't before, even if you did not pay the donation, please just let us know that you will be attending. We want to know you will be attending so that we can anticipate your payment through whatever, whatever that may be, cash app, sell, or cash. So we want to know that you are coming. That's yes or no, right? We want to know yes or no. You come in or not? Are you going to come in or not? So we want to see every face. We want to see every lady that can come and invite a sister to come as well. That could be anyone. That, 
They don't have to be in the sanctuary or go to Mount Olive. You can invite your sisters to come, and that could be from your job, that could be from school, whatever you may want to invite an aunt, somebody you want to experience what it means to have the power of women. So we're understanding this because we're going through different seasons in our lives, and all the topics we're discussing, we're going to bring that in person and really talk about it here at Mount Olive on May 20th. Somebody say May 20th. May 20th. All right, the time is fast approaching, so we need to know if you will be attending. Even if you do not have your donation at this moment, let us know your yes if you will be attending so that we can anticipate the specific number and cater to that group. Yes? Amen. So the time is for 11.30 a.m., where we're going to come together during the brunch time and really discuss different topics. We're going to pray. We're going to talk about things that we face as women. So we want to make sure that everyone is in attendance at 1130 so we can experience this together. Amen. And all the conversation we've been having online, we're going to bring the same energy in person so that we can fellowship together, that we can commune with one another and understand that although we may be in different areas and ages of our lives, we're going through the same thing. Same thing. So it's good to have different women and understand that you're not alone. God reminds us all the time that we're not alone. But as women, we need to understand and feel each other's presence. So we're thankful to have a, a time where we can come together at this tea party, not just for the tea, not just to look beautiful, but to know that you're not alone. You're not alone. So we're going to come together, enjoy Jesus, and definitely have a good old Mount Olive time, right? Wherever we do, whatever we do, we're going to have a good time. So we thank God, and we just put our hands together for our first lady. Amen. Leading out the charge for the women's empowerment ministry. Amen. Amen. And making sure we go forward boldly, boldly as women of God. So we just anticipate a good time in the Lord. Amen. And see you this Saturday at 6 p.m. on Google Meet. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Every woman, every lady that's here wants to see you. Ladies want to see you there. First lady wants to see you there. The ministers want to see you there. Amen. Let's together on that day. Let us all stand in the presence of the Lord. That's all for now. May God continue to bless you and strengthen you. If there's anything else, we will put it on uh, our chat. We will get it put on the website or whichever it is. Even as we're updating and put more information even on our website and so forth. May the Lord strengthen and bless you. We raise your hands to heaven. Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time as we came together to give you glory and to give you praise. We are grateful for what you have done, what you have, what, and what you are about to do, even in our lives. Bless and guide even everyone that are, that's gathered, even to our brother Daniel, guide him and bless him, dear Lord, strengthen him. Amen. And even every minister, every deacon, every missionary, every evangelist, every worker, every person in the house of the living God, they, they will show forth their good work and glorify you, which is in heaven. So in Jesus' name, bless us even as we absent one from another. Guide us and keep us. So in Jesus' name we pray, we say amen, and let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. May God bless you. Greet somebody in the name of the Lord. All our visitors, thank you for coming. Thank you for being here. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, mother. Thank you, mother. Amen. May the Lord bless you and strengthen you. Praise God. Praise God. We got Brother Deborah. Amen. He's from an island too. He's from Manhattan Island. In Jesus' name. The island of Manhattan. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Greet somebody. Greet somebody. Don't leave here till you touch and agree with at least seven people. In the name of God bless you, mother. I know you I just got a question. Bad is an island? Seriously? All of this is an island. All of this is technically considered Long Island. So that's what the bridges is for? We're connecting to islands? That's Brooklyn, Queens, oh, all of this are, is technically uh, considered an island. Long Island. Oh. If Russia or China come, they're going to blow our bridges. We can't get over. 
Can't get out. You better buy a boat. Get your private jet ready. Sign wave. Thank <laughs> you.